Ciao mondo, hello world, hola mundo, hello mon. We are here in Pittsburgh at the University of Pittsburgh Medical Center with the senior faculty member, uh, Professor John Kellum, but basically a long lasting friend. And uh, I am going to present at the grand round the concept of extracorporeal therapies in acute kidney injury and what happened in the last 40 years. As a matter of fact, the title is uh, uh, 40 years in 40 minutes. So we will ask John, that has participated in many of these uh, historical evolutions, what do you think about the evolution of these renal replacement therapies in the last years? Well, so uh, my, uh, my memory certainly doesn't go back 40 years, but certainly oh, over the last uh, 10 or 20 <laughs> years, uh, I can say that uh, there's been a, uh, an exponential growth, I think, in, in terms of uh, not only uh, technology development and application, but understanding of fundamental biology related to uh, acute kidney injury and acute renal failure. And, you know, we've been uh, collaborating for, I think, uh, a large portion of that time and uh, it's been very interesting I think to see the the co-evolution uh, between what goes on in uh, Vicenza and what's been going on in uh, in, in Pittsburgh. No and uh, what do you think has been the major achievement uh, probably in the last decade? Well you know we have uh, real epidemiology now and of course what facilitated that was uh, a lot of us coming together. Uh, you remember now uh, gosh 15 years ago we uh, had, a, had a, a first meeting of the acute uh, what was then the acute dialysis quality initiative but now the acute disease quality initiative uh, ADKI and developed a consensus definition for acute kidney injury which led to the ability to actually measure uh, event rates around the world, and we we know so much more about this disease now than we uh, than we've ever known before, which I think you know opens up all kinds of opportunities to do uh, fundamental research and uh, and clinical research. What people want to know is. Did mortality decrease thanks to all these technological? Well, you know, it is decreasing, and I and I think you know the the the, the cynic might say uh, part of that is because you're identifying more cases, you're having more sensitivity, uh, so the cases you're 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 finding are are less severe, and so your denominator is growing, but your numerator is staying the same. But I think that's overly simplistic. I think there really is a fundamental change in uh, in outcome over the years. We're treating patients, you know very well, we're treating patients into their uh, 70s and 80s with renal replacement therapy and sending them home uh, where we wouldn't even have treated those patients uh, 15 years ago. Absolutely. One last question. How do you think personalized medicine will take over in respect to the frustrating results of large randomized trials? Well, so thank you for asking that question because that's actually one of the things that uh, uh, we're both very interested in, uh, this idea of doing clinical trials for complex diseases like AKI and sepsis, et cetera, and just sort of asking a question about what's the average treatment for the average patient is decidedly 20th century, I think. And I think yeah. now uh, we need to be thinking about how we can tailor therapy with use of diagnostics uh, and, uh, uh, and other approaches to actually personalize the care for our patients. Yeah, in oncology, they have been doing a pretty exactly good right. job over the years, and they are now tailored the therapy based on genome and other things. We need at least to identify phenotypes first, and maybe moving into genotypes uh, to uh, give the right therapy to the right patient. Well, you're in the right place for that discussion, my friend. Excellent. Welcome to so Pittsburgh. from the University of Pittsburgh Medical Center, thanks for joining today, Cappuccino, and have a wonderful day. <sighs> Excellent. Excellent.